Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm really excited to share with you what's inside my skincare basket. It's like a K-Beauty Addicts version of what's inside my purse. <laughs> now, you may be wondering, what is a skincare basket? Well, I have a lot of products, obviously. I review a lot of products. I own a lot. My stash is kind of big, right? So I definitely have a lot to choose from, and that can become very overwhelming very quickly when you're trying to just get your morning and nighttime routine done. So I put all the skincare that I have on current rotation into my skincare basket, and this achieves a couple of things. Number one, it's stress-free skincare. When you're looking at a smaller selection of your stash, it's less overwhelming to make a choice of what you're gonna be doing today. It also keeps you really consistent with your products as well, which I feel like skin always appreciates. Plus, it makes you mobile so you can do your skincare routine anywhere in your house that you like. I personally love to do my skincare routine in front of the TV, watching some Netflix and patting on my layer. So this allows me to go from the bathroom to the living room to my vanity to my bed, wherever I need to do my skincare. This makes it a lot easier. So give the video a big thumbs up because today I'm going to share with you what is inside this skincare basket, what products do I currently have on rotation. So first up, cleansers, pretty slim category for me. Um, I'm not a cleanser fiend by any means. I've been very loyal to the Hada Labo Goku Gen Oil Cleanser. My bottle's getting really close to empty and I have to make the decision, right? Am I going to buy the refill for this or am I gonna try something new? And I haven't quite decided yet because this does work so, so well to break down makeup, but it's also a great cleanser even when you're not wearing makeup and just wearing sunscreen. I always like to do a double cleansing process at nighttime and so this this has just been a great gentle um, but effective option. So I do have two cleansers on rotation. The first is the Crave Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. I love using this. It's very moisture preserving type of cleanser. It doesn't strip my skin at all. Very gentle but gets the job done. This particular bottle is very close to being empty. I probably have about like three more weeks of use of this one. And so I'm keeping this in rotation because I don't wanna have that like one random cleanser that's basically empty, but you stopped using it and just kind of like floats around and takes up space. So I do wanna get this one empty, but I have been very excited about another cleanser recently. This is a much newer edition, and that is the Hamish All Clean Green Foam. This is actually a very similar texture to the Crave. It's um kind of like a jelly texture. And I find that that is very moisture preserving on the skin. You know, this is something that cleans your face effectively, but it doesn't strip the necessary moisture that we all need on our skin. It's very respectful to your skin, very gentle. So I actually like both of these cleansers a lot. So I've been really like bananas over First Essences. I love what they bring to my skincare routine. You know, they really prep and condition my skin. Many of them bring other benefits like soothing and calming or brightening to the skin, and I've just really enjoyed uh, having them back in my routine. One is uh, the Misha Time Revolution First Treatment Essence. It's a really nice minimal kind of first essence. It does brighten up your skin, which I appreciate. It always makes my skin feel hydrated and uh, soft, and it just really makes my skin absorb the other layers just a little bit better, and I always like that in a first essence. Now, I've also been using the Tony Moly Mugwort First Essence, and this is a uh, I think a three year fermented mugwort essence and I just love mugwort so much. You know I'm kind of mugwort crazy. It's great at reducing redness, inflammation on the skin. It's a great skin soother and calmer. And when you have, um, you know when you have sensitive skin, when you're prone to bouts of irritation and things like that, it's great to have this type of calming ingredient that you can really rely on in such a simple formula. I also like to use this not only like right after cleansing, but if you soak five layer cotton in this and make yourself a little quick toner mask. It's uh, a great way to bring a lot of soothing uh, relief to your skin in a very quick way. Okay, toners, my favorite category of product. One is from a brand that is new to me. This is Lyricos Calming Pure Water. This is a brand I think that's under Amore Pacific, but it's definitely something that flies under the radar because I'd never heard of it before. This is actually a very minimal toner. It only has 12 ingredients and one of the ingredients is um, actually Artemisia or Mugwort. I told you I love that ingredient. Now, I actually only just started using this about a week ago, so my thoughts on it are still pretty um, 
uh, pretty fresh, I guess. Um, they're not very deep yet. It's a very, very watery toner. Those of you familiar with the Etude House Soon Jung toner, it's a very similar texture to that. So it layers up really nicely. It absorbs really quickly. I have not noticed much calming from this toner, but I must admit I don't have that much irritation currently in the last week that I could really test it on. Now, another toner that I have on rotation is actually a little uh, deluxe sample, Cosrx Propolis Synergy Toner, and full disclosure, I just bought the full size. <laughs> this is a really nice moisturizing toner, but it comes in a thinner texture than a lot of the moisturizing toners that we're used to that are like thicker gel type of textures. This is actually a little bit more runny. It's got some body to it. It's got some slip and nourishment to it, but it's coming in a much lighter package, which I really like. Plus I love Propolis. My skin responds to it so well. It always makes my skin so glowy and bright. So this is actually something that I like to put one or two layers of like this Lyricost toner on first and then use the propolis toner just because i found the propolis toner because it does have it has hydration but it also has more moisture to it and i just need that one or two little layers of that deeper watery hydration when i just use the cosrx toner alone my skin doesn't feel as hydrated as it could be so that's the method that works for me kind of a hydration sandwich but i've been really impressed with this one and i'm excited for the full size next up serums i actually have four in my skincare basket uh, right now so one of the first ones is um, one that i've had for a while this is the isn't tree spot saver mugwort ampule i love mugwort as i told you before this is great to bring in my into my routine when i just need that calming when maybe i need some redness reduction this definitely does perform in those areas for like sensitive skin care. I will tell you though that this texture while it is runny it's hydrating and light there's a little bit of like slip to it almost like this this almost like an oily kind of a feel to it very light but almost like an oil feel to it that sometimes doesn't always make this the best combination with certain products like sometimes this in combination with maybe if I do two serums or um, maybe I'm doing a heavier oil or a cream it sometimes builds up heavy on my skin. And that's part of the reason why I sometimes shuffle this in and out. So this is an occasional use serum. I still really like it a lot, um, but that texture, if you like to put a lot on your face, which I do, um, it may not always pair well, at least in my experience. So another serum that I have on rotation is also from Isn Tree, and this is their EGF Repair Ampule. It's very thin, it's very hydrating, and I really like to pair this with another serum, just because it's almost a little bit too light for my skin and during winter time I do prefer a more a thicker or moisturizing serum to kind of start layering in that protection because it gets so cold and windy here so I do um, pretty much always pair this with another product now this is an interesting one because when you first get it it's actually kind of like a two-phase product they have um, a peptide complex and then a centella complex that are separated and you have to kind of like break the seal and mix them together um, and that's when you like kind of start the shelf life so to speak of this product which is six months which had me a little bit worried when I first bought it because as you can tell I shuffle in a lot of products but it is actually so small and it's starting to empty so quickly that I think I'll be done with this in about a month so I'm gonna stay pretty consistent with this one as well just because EGF peptides, in order to tell if they're doing something on your skin, you need to be very consistent and you need to use it very long term. So I am curious to know how this actually works for my skin. So far, I haven't really seen any benefits. I must admit, I'm a little weary of how this is actually going to end up just because I'm like, I don't think it's doing anything, but, but things can always change. So I'm not going to say too much about it yet. I definitely want to give this the benefit of time to see what it can do for me. I've also recently added in the Clavu Sensitive Care C Silt Repair Ampule. You saw this in my most recent Yes Style unboxing haul. And this texture really surprised me because I was not expecting this to be a moisturizing and thick serum. So perfect for winter time. It's not a, a sticky ampule by any means, but it definitely is thicker. Those of you familiar with the skin food propolis essence, it's actually thicker and more moisturizing than that one is. We'll also tell you on this one, have not noticed a lot of like the calming benefits that it claims 
haven't really been going through any irritation though so you know take it for what you will but as far as like a moisturizing and protecting um very kind of straightforward serum this definitely fits the bill this next serum i only bring into my routine about four nights a week and this is from stradia skin this is their rewind five percent niacinamide the reason that i bring this in a couple nights a week is i like to use this on the nights i'm not using chemical exfoliation niacinamide in percentages of two percent and higher can brighten up the skin so it can help with hyperpigmentation, acne marks, that type of thing. And so um, I do like to use this because I do notice that this does kind of help even out my skin tone. Something that I do struggle with no matter what brightening ingredients I bring into my routine. But percentages of niacinamide 4% and higher, remember this is a 5%, can actually stimulate collagen production on your skin. Yeah, it's a great anti-aging ingredient. It can help keep your skin smooth and plump and firm and fight wrinkles, which is definitely something that I want to bring into my routine. Niacinamide, generally speaking, it's a very non-aggressive ingredient. It's generally very gentle, especially in comparison to your retinols, your vitamin Cs, chemical exfoliation, right? It's definitely a great gentler um, alternative. So I've been experimenting with using this um frequently and i've been liking the results i definitely have been noticing that my complexion is a lot more even um, as far as the collagen production thing goes you know what i mean like that's a little bit difficult for me to gauge just because i'm not seeing a ton of collagen breakdown on my skin yet but i'm just at that age where it's definitely going to be occurring and I want to fight those signs as much as possible so I love adding this into my routine because it's non-stimulating on my skin this is definitely a texture that's a little bit more on the thick side. Um, most niacinamide serums are kind of thick and sticky by nature. This is definitely one of the more appealing textures that I've tried compared to like the 10% niacinamide um, formulas like the one from The Ordinary. This is definitely less sticky. So moving on to chemical exfoliation and special treatments. By Wish Trend Acid Duo Hibiscus 63 Cream. You've heard me talk about this before. I'm still really liking this as my main chemical exfoliation exfoliating product. I do have sensitive skin, so I like to um, go pretty slow with my exfoliants and go as gentle as possible. So I bring this into my routine about two nights a week. Now this uses um, PHA and LHA, which are alternatives to AHA and BHA. So they have the same benefits. They, it can not only help to um, brighten and sort of resurface the top layer of the skin, but it can also dive deeper into the pores and address things like acne, um, clogged pores, blackheads, things like that. So you're going to get both, you know, the best of both worlds. But uh, these acids are proven to be a lot gentler and kinder to the skin. And I can attest to that with this product because this has not given my skin any issues. I really didn't experience any extra dryness with this, no irritation. I don't have to do special routines around this in order to accommodate for it. So this has just been really great. I put this on right before my oils and creams. This is technically a moisturizer. It's a really light gel texture. So I always put something on top of it. Um, and I don't find that, that it builds up too heavy on my skin. Um, but I've been really impressed with the results of this. I've been pretty infrequent with my use of this product, but I am trying to use this more regularly. This is the Arbitin Blending Powder from TM. It's a little powder that you mix into your toners or serums. I usually just put it into my last layer of toner, mix it in, and then just apply it to your face. I know I talked about using the niacinamide and um, using the LHA and the PHA, but I have to tell you, Arbitin really is one of the best ingredients to use, especially if you're dealing with sun damage. I'm not talking about post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, the dark marks left after an inflamed pimple. I'm talking straight up sun damage, freckles, patches of discoloration on your skin. And I do have some of that. I do have some old sun damage that has um, kind of emerged over the years. The thing about sun damage that really sucks is, yes, I've been very, very dedicated to sun protection for seven years now or something, something close to that. But yet the, all the damage I did prior to me being really diligent, I'm still dealing with that. Some of that is still emerging. It takes years to create and sometimes it takes years to emerge and sometimes it takes years to address. So it's just the nature of the beast, right? This is still very gentle on the skin. And when I'm saying gentle, I'm saying in comparison to 
retinols, vitamin C's, AHA's, things like that. But I do notice that sometimes when I use this, I have to have my skincare routine on point because it can be slightly drying on the skin. It's not a big deal. Um, it's very likely that sometimes I apply too much, but it's just something to be aware of. So sometimes I'll um, just be a little extra generous with my oils or doing more moisturizing serums right after using this. But um, this definitely does do the trick. You just gotta be consistent with it. All right, eye care. I have been super obsessed with eye patches. I've been using them so much over the last couple of months and I have noticed a benefit from using them consistently. Um, I've noticed that my eye area just looks a little bit more fresh, a little bit more awake. I have been dealing with some um, wintertime insomnia. I go through this every single year. It's terrible. I'm tired all day long and then once I get into bed I cannot fall asleep for the life of me and then I'm up until two or three in the morning and then I just wake up in the morning and the whole cycle starts again. It's horrible. Um, and it shows up um, under my eyes. I'm just really starting to get bags underneath my eyes and darkness underneath my eyes. And I have noticed that adding in the eye patches helps. It helps. Finding a non-fragranced eye patch was like a quest. It was a quest and I actually think I met it with VT Cosmetics Sika Natural Eye Gel Patches. Now these do not contain essential oils. They do not contain artificial fragrance. They do have a scent on them though and it's actually coming from the Sika. Sika actually smells quite similar to Mugwort. It's that really earthy, herbally kind of fresh smell. I've actually been really impressed with the material of the eye patches. Some eye patches are so thin and delicate, I always end up ripping them because I'm trying to position them on my eye area and then, whoop, there goes the corner because my nail sliced into it or something. Like just, you gotta be so delicate with them and yeah, it's, it's too fussy. Some of them are very thick. This is actually kind of somewhere in the middle. I find these very easy to handle without ripping them. Um, they stay in place pretty well. I mean, all eye patches are gonna slide a little bit, but these stay in place pretty well. And I get some really nice benefits from it. You know, I do get redness around my eyes. These help reduce that. It helps with puffiness. It helps with kind of just hydrating and smoothing the eye area. So I've been liking these a lot, totally fragrance free. So I've been really excited to discover these. Cosrx Snail Peptide Eye Cream. I've actually been enjoying this one a lot. It's a very snaily texture. It's actually similar to the Cosrx Snail Cream. It's quite stringy. It's a white cream that feels hydrating and it does have some moisturization to it as well. I actually really like this combo. It feels like kind of watery and hydrating when you put it on your eye area but then you feel that it locks in with that nourishment um, to it. I would call this like a, a medium weight eye cream. It's not thick and heavy and it's definitely not like a gel type either. It's it's somewhere in the middle. I think it actually works pretty nicely for winter time and as far as my like barrier products, moisturizers, that type of thing, I've only been using the same three products all winter long and I swear this is what's keeping my barrier so freaking happy this winter and that is, you know it, Stradia Liquid Gold as well as the Stradia Fortify Fatty Acid Facial Oil Blend. What I actually do is I take a little drop or two of the Fortify oil, which is quite thick, honestly. I actually like that the thickness of this oil. And then I put a pump of liquid gold into that and I mix them together and then I apply that to my face. And I find that it actually absorbs better when the two are mixed together. When I do one layer of Fortify and one layer of liquid gold, it's a little heavy. It feels like I can feel the layer sitting on top of my skin when I mix them together, it's just the right amount. And this is gonna give me all of those ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids. It's so healing, it's so protective, it's so nourishing for the skin. And this is everything your moisture barrier is craving. So I always call it my barrier cocktail. After I put that onto my face, um, I do follow up with moisturizer. You gotta keep that skin protected in winter, especially when you suffer from dryness. Iliune Ceramide Ado Concentrate Cream. It's all I ever talk about. It's m like my top favorite moisturizer ever right now. Can you believe I still have this bottle? I think I got it at the end of August, um, but it is it is getting close to empty, so I will have to repurchase this one. Right now, this is serving my skin so well, there's really no need to change things. You know, don't, don't fix it if it's not broke. When I reach for a sleeping pack, and I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not that often just because my core skincare routine serves my skin so well recently that I haven't felt the need to reach for a sleeping pack. 
but I will occasionally, maybe once a week, maybe even less than that. The one that I'm, I'm exclusively reaching for though is the uh, Purito Dermide Sika Barrier Sleeping Pack. And I like the texture because it's creamy and nourishing, but it's not heavy. This brings in the nourishment and the protection without the weight and without the grease. This is just something that I'll bring into my routine if I'm suffering from a lot of extra dryness, if I feel like my barrier's gone a little bit off and I know that the dehydration is going to get worse. If the temperature is just like suddenly go real nasty, you know what I mean? And I got to blast the heat overnight. Um, that's when I'm going to bring a sleeping pack into my routine. If I feel like my skincare routine just didn't quite do enough for my skin, that's what I personally use them for is to protect my skin. It's like an insurance policy against dehydration. I use my lip sleeping mask morning, night, afternoon, midday. Like I just use lip sleeping masks all the time. My lips are really, really dry. I've always struggled to find those products that just really hit the mark for me. You know, my lips are quite picky. Now, if you recently caught my um, empties video, you know that I just finished the uh, Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, which I still adore and love so, so freaking much. I do have the Clavu Lip Mask currently open and by my bedside, and it's okay. I, I do think that it does the job. It keeps my lips protected and nourished. My one gripe with this one is that it just does not last on my lips as long and, and, and of course, it's going to have to be in comparison as long as the Laneige does. And so I do find that I have to reapply this more often or I'm caught with a slightly more dry lip um, earlier than I would with the Laneige. So it's a minor gripe. It's not a big deal. I mean, I can keep reapplying. I've been doing it my entire life, right, with dry lips. Not a big deal. But I know some of you guys are curious about the differences. That's my personal opinion. Lip products are so individual though. Have you noticed that? Um, I think it just comes down to the needs of your lips. For me, Laneige is slightly better, but the Clav is doing the trick too. So I'm hoping to make a good dent in this one. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. I had so much fun walking you through the products that I currently have on rotation. You know, this skincare basket saved my butt because I was really just starting to get very overwhelmed looking at all my products all at once. So this definitely helped save my sanity and definitely gave me some organization to my skincare testing schedule. So I'm really curious to know, how do you organize your skincare? Do you use shelves, baskets, drawers, closets? I'm really curious, so let me know in the comment box below. If you're not subscribed to my channel but you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more from me, do hit subscribe before you exit out of the video. I release two new K-Beauty Focus videos every single week and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't actually miss those two new videos. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I can't wait to see you in the next video and we'll talk soon. Bye guys.